As we approach the uh, end of the year, everyone wants to know, will the economy pick up in 2012? Will we be better off next year than we were this year? And some people questioned my next guest when he predicted the big meltdown on the financial markets. But you know what? He was right on. Joining me now, the author of The Great Crash Ahead, Strategies for a World Turned Upside Down, Harry Dent. And and welcome back to the Smartest Retirement Show, ladies and gentlemen. We were on with David Royer, author of the Top 10 IRA Mistakes. We're going to continue our conversation with Tyrone Clark, 30-year veteran in the business. The number to dial is 866-242-6057. If you have questions about your money, how to defend and protect your retirement, and uh, questions about taxes, since in the last segment we did talk about taxes extensively, uh, give us a call. And uh, someone will be able to answer your questions. 866-242-6057. We do have Harry Dent joining us on the program, author of The Crash Ahead, New York Times bestseller and world-renowned economist. Mr. Dent, welcome back to the program, and thank you for being on the show. Oh, nice to be back. So The Great Crash Ahead, uh, one of the top headlines in today's media is the Federal Reserve easing has helped fire one up one of the strongest stock market rebounds ever. And the promise of more is keeping it going, some analysts say. Is this accurate? Will 2012 be bullish, or should we expect the crash you describe in your book? Well, you know, I, I think 2012 may be more mixed, but, but the bigger point to understand here is that unlike past recoveries, the government stimulus has been massive uh, since we had this banking crisis and, and the economy was starting to deflate. They're trying to inflate the economy back, and by putting trillions of dollars into the banking system, into the financial markets, it's not going into lending because consumers and businesses are too much in debt and overexpanded in the last great boom. And so it's only pushing up a third and final bubble in everything except for real estate, you know, commodities, stocks, um, you know, junk bonds, bonds and stuff. So this is a bubble that's going to have to burst. It's an artificial recovery based on trillions of dollars of government stimulus, and it's it's going to be a, an artificial rise in stocks, a third bubble. And again, we had a bubble in the early 2000 that crashed, a bubble in the 2007 that crashed. This is the third, and we think the final bubble. The question is, when does it end? Before Europe started to see a flight of funds, uh, of you know, of bond funds into the U.S. markets and Treasury bonds, which which pushed our interest rates even lower. I would have thought, oh, it might end this year, but I think it may end more like a year from now because the Fed now has the full capacity to stimulate and come up with a strong QE3 when Europe slowing spills on our economy. So I think we may have a mini stock crash in 2012, but I think the bigger stock crash will come uh, 2013 or 14. The government is basically creating a bubble to prevent the bubble from bursting, to prevent the banks from going down. And it's not helping the everyday consumer hardly at all. Uh, so just reading your bio, it's rather impressive. Uh, you are very well respected. You've predicted all sorts of things that have happened in this country and other countries. When everybody else told you you were going to be wrong, you turned out being right. And I'm sorry to tell our viewers that you are one of the ones who is predicting that this recession will lead to another Great Depression? Yes, you know, this isn't just a banking crisis. It's the peak of, of the massive baby boom generation's entire spending cycle. Harry, when you say they're creating another bubble, you're, you're talking about the actual stimulus that they're creating. Yeah. Uh, and you're saying that'll ultimately fail because of the demographics that, that as people spend when they hit 46, they're buying, they're borrowing. Now those people are retired or retiring, so they don't need any of that money. Yeah, well, actually what, what they're doing, yeah, at age 46, people peak in their spending. It kind of plateaus in the 50 as the kids are getting out of the nest, whether high school or college. And then literally people spend dramatically less because they're saving for retirement first. It's not because they're retiring. They're saving for retirement from age 50 to 63 or 64. Then they retire and spend down those savings. But the point is people spend less from age 46 to 50 until they die. So the baby boom is done. They're not going to be buying more houses. They're not going to be driving their cars as much, carting their kids around. They're not going to be buying food for their kids, putting them through college and private school and high school and all this stuff. So, And that's, the hey, that's, why, that, so that's why that, that uh, stimulus will ultimately failed in is what you're saying. Yes, yes. I mean, the stimulus has been fighting headwinds from this, but from about 2012 or 13 forwards, we get more into this decline phase for the baby boom. So the stimulus will be 
you know, harder to keep economy going. And of course, this we got the biggest debt bubble in history, way beyond the government debt. You know, 42 trillion in private debt, 66 trillion in unfunded health. You know, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security promises. I mean, this this is the greatest debt and credit bubble in history. And, and we study history. Credit and debt bubbles never ever end well. They have to deflate at some point. So the government's just fighting this. The government's throwing trillions of dollars to keep the banking system and economy from deflating. But you know what the truth is? If we let this deflation happen, as painful as it could be for a few years, we would see home costs come down even farther, mortgage costs, you know, education, health care costs. We would eliminate $20 trillion in private debt. This is what happened in the 1930s and set us on stage to become the greatest country in history. Folks, 866-242-6057. You're listening to the Smartest Retirement Show. If you just tuned in, we're on the uh, show with Mr. Harry S. Dent, author of The Crash Ahead. He also wrote The Roaring 2000s and The Great Depression Ahead or The, the Next Depression Ahead. Um, you got to pick up these books and read them, study them. We've been giving them out and studying them for years, and um, uh, you have to get familiar with this information because it's stuff you won't hear in the traditional media outlets, things like demographics and how to study those trends. 866-242-6057, 866-242-6057. Um, Harry, you, you talked on our show last time about deflation, and you just mentioned it again. Is that something people should be concerned with? Is it happening? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's a good and bad side of deflation. The, the bad side is when deflation sets in, like in late 2008, early 2009, all assets, all investments go down, stocks here and around the world, commodities, gold, silver. I mean, even gold and silver didn't protect against that downturn. Um, the good side is, is the reduction of costs long-term, greater competitiveness. It does a lot of good things long-term. It's the winter season, we call it, that prepares us for the next spring and long-term growth cycle. Um, but deflation actually comes the most from massive private debt after a big credit and debt bubble like we saw just from 2000 to 2008, just eight years, we saw the total U.S. private debt, consumer, business, financial sector, all that, go from $20 trillion to $42 trillion in eight years. I mean, the most astounding bubble in history. That debt fueled the housing bubble, home prices doubling and tripling in different areas overnight for no good reason. And now we're suffering that bubble starting to deflate. So deflation is the trend. When debt deleverages, you destroy all the dollars you created in the bubble. That makes dollars, fewer dollars chasing the same goods, which means lower prices for goods, which is a good thing long term. It also means that dollars get destroyed and the dollar internationally becomes more valuable. So the dollar will tend to rise. So there's a lot of big changes coming that most people won't see because most people just look and say, oh, the government's inflating. That's going to cause inflation. That means buy gold and silver and, and get out of the U.S. dollar and buy Swiss francs. No, that's not what's going to happen. It's the opposite of the 1970s. Deflation uh, is a good thing long term. It's very painful short term as it is, is all these asset bubbles and stocks and commodities and real estate deflate so you have to get out of the way of it you have to protect your principal uh, protect yourself from rising taxes which will occur in the years ahead and wait years from now to reinvest when things are at more normal levels everything from housing stocks everything else